Hey there, Mr. Weaver here. This is Module 6, Lesson 3, Solving Compound Inequalities. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve and graph linear equalities containing the word and, and solve and graph linear equalities containing the word or. Let's learn. Solving compound inequalities using the word and. A compound inequality is two or more inequalities that are connected by the word and or or. A compound inequality with the word and is only true when both inequalities are true at the same time. So its graph is where the graphs of the inequalities overlap. The overlapping section is called the intersection. And to determine where they intersect, you graph them separately and then identify where they overlap. So for example, if we had x is greater than negative 4, that would be this part here. If we had also had to do x is less than or equal to 3, we'd have this. Putting them together, if it had the word and, and I wanted to know when x is greater than negative 4 and x is less than or equal to 3, here's where it's greater than negative 4, and here's where it's less than 3. So that overlapping section, it's going to continue being greater than negative 4 going to the right until it gets to 3. And it will be less than 3 forever, but we have to be more than negative 4. So that section between the two numbers is going to be your AND intersection. We can also write it like this, where we're saying that x is between negative 4 and 3. And because the, this one has the little line under it, we say including 3. So it can be read in two ways. It can be read as x is greater than negative 4 and less than or equal to 3. Or, as I just said, x is between negative 4 and 3, including 3. Example 1. Solve and graph an intersection. Solve negative 8 is less than or equal to h minus 2 is less than 1. Then graph the solution set. If you come across something that looks like this, where we have part of it it's all connected together. This is an and situation. So we have really this inequality and we have this inequality. Notice the middle goes with both ends. So to solve this, we're going to write two inequalities and solve them both. One, we have negative 8 is less than or equal to h minus 2. And for the other, we have h minus 2 is less than 1. So again, that middle part was used in both. When we solve these, the good news, even though you're solving two of them, they have the same steps for both. So here to solve them, I would just need to add 2 to each side. So if I did that for our first inequality, I end up with negative 6 is less than or equal to h. And then still have to add 2 to each side to solve the other one. I would end up with h is less than 3. So our solution set is when h is greater than or equal to negative 6 and h is less than 3. And remember, we can write it and combine it back together as shown. Graphing that, first, h could be equal to negative 6, so it's a closed circle there. Or on the other end, h boundary is at 3, but not including 3. And then I would pick the line between because I want h to be between those numbers. So I would just draw my line between those two circles. Check your understanding. Solve the compound inequality and graph the solution set. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that x was between negative 3 and 1 and includes both ends. So graphing that, I would put I would put closed circles at negative 3 and positive 1, and my line between. Remember, we're solving each step. You would subtract 2. You'd get negative 9 or 3. That's getting rid of the subtracting 2. Then dividing both sides by 3, I would end up with negative 3 and 1. So I did the same thing to both sides for both inequality. Subtracting 2, dividing by 3, we get our solution. Let's learn. Solving compound inequalities using the word or. A compound inequality containing the word or is true if one of the equations is true, not necessarily both. As long as one's true, it's good. 
A union is the graph of a compound inequality containing the word or. So we had an intersection for and and a union for or. The solution is a solution of either, not necessarily both. So if we look at our graphs, we have x is greater than or equal to 1. We have this graph. Or x is less than or equal to negative 3. And this graph. For our union, as long as our answer falls somewhere in that line for either of them, we're good. So if the answer was 3, we're good. If someone wanted to use negative 4, we're good. But if someone wanted to use negative 1, it doesn't work because it doesn't fit either of the inequalities. Example 3. Solve and graph a union. To solve a union, it's pretty much the same as what we just did with an intersection. We're going to solve both inequalities. This time, though, we're going to have to solve them separately, and they don't necessarily follow the same steps. So, solving the one on the left, I would subtract 8 from both sides, then divide both sides by 4, and I'd end up with n is less than or equal to 2. My sign stayed the same. I did not divide by a negative. On the other one, I would subtract 7 from both sides, get negative 3n is less than negative 18. Dividing both sides by negative 3, this time I have to flip the sign to get n is greater than 6, since I divided by negative 3. Now I have my two boundaries, 2 and 6. I'm going to graph them on a number line. So close circle and arrow to the left for n is less than or equal to 2, and open circle with an arrow to the right for n is greater than 6. The union then is all points that are less than 2 and all points that are greater than 6. So we would have to write it looking like this, all numbers for n, n is less than or equal to 2, or n is greater than 6. As long as one of those things works, it's good. Check your understanding, solve the union inequality, and graph the solution set. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, you should have said the solution set was x is less than 2, or x is greater than or equal to 7. You should have been able to eliminate b right away. The fact that it says or, and this is an and statement in b, to help you out a little. Then if we're graphing it, open circle at 2, close circle at 7, and then the arrows are pointing away from each other. In general, as a quick hint, if you see the word and, 95% of the time, the arrows are kind of pointing at each other. And if you see the word or, the arrows are pointing away from each other. This is not necessarily always the case, but it does happen quite a bit. Example 4. Overlapping intervals. Solve 4k plus 12 is less than 2, or 4 minus 2k is greater than 4. Then graph it. So we're going to solve both. Subtract 12 from both sides. Divide both sides by 4. We get our first boundary. Then on the other one, I would subtract 4 divide by negative 2, and I get my other boundary. Here I had to flip the sign since I divided by negative 2. Now, if I'm plotting them, here's my first one. When k is less than negative 2.5, my second one, when k is less than 0. Notice, if I were to try to graph them on the same thing, my first one ends up being within the second one. So they ended up overlapping. Here was a situation where my or values ended up going the same direction. Because one is embedded in the other, I'm only going to include really the larger interval. So zero included more numbers than the negative 2.5 did. So I really only need to write the larger interval. So here it would be k when k is less than zero. Check your understanding. Solve the compound inequality, then graph the solution set. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said a, m, when m is greater than or equal to 3. If we graph it, these ones end up having overlapping intervals, so the larger interval is when m is greater than or equal to 3. The other one, which is the second one here, ends up being when m is greater than or equal to 5. That one is within the m is greater than or equal to 3, so we just use the one that's containing more numbers. 
which is m is greater than 3. For compound inequalities, we can also use Desmos. If you are given a compound inequality such as this, sometimes it will let you type both things in, and it will just tell you what the graph looks like. Remember, the dashed lines are the same as the open circles, and the shading is the same as where the arrow is. If you have more complicated problems, though, so let's say it had the x plus 3 in the middle there, notice it didn't graph anything for you. What you need to do instead is type it as two separate things. So if you had negative 2 is less than x plus 3, it'll graph that one thing for you, then type the other half of it, and it will graph the other. And your solution set ends up being, if it's an intersection, where are they overlapping? So they're overlapping from here to here with your circles. And if it's an or statement where they're not overlapping, we can still use both things. Again, the lines indicate the type of circle. Where they cross is the type of boundary. So this would be an or statement, a union. Their arrows are away from each other at 1 and 3. For the last example that we just did, make sure you're using the letter X. I can't use M. Notice you can see that one of them is inside the other. So which one is including more things? That's the blue one here, which our solution is at 3. Close circle, arrow to the right. So x is greater than or equal to 3.